In this video, we will discuss about the action stage, which is the most important stage in Blue Prism. The action stage allows you to interact with other applications by calling a specific function from a library. For example, we have a library for Microsoft Excel, and this library has functions like create a new worksheet, get number of rows, get active cell value, etc. So we can use an action stage and configure it to call one of these functions in the process. Let me show you how this works. In the last video, we manually entered the list of students and their percentage in the collection named students. Now let's see how we can use the action stage to import data into a collection from an Excel sheet instead of we manually typing it. So I have this Excel file which has the list of students and their percentage. We need to use the action stage to import this data into a Blue Prism collection. I'll first drag and drop an action stage into the canvas and I will double click to open the properties. Now we will see there are two drop down fields, business object and action. The business object field is where you choose the library and the action will list all the functions of the library. So basically in Blue Prism terminology, a library is referred to as a business object and a function is referred to as an action. In this case, we first need to open the Excel file. So I will select the business object MS Excel VBO and you can see the list of available actions within this business object. In order to open our Excel file, I'll first create an Excel instance. This does not mean that I'm creating a new file, rather I'm creating a new instance of Excel application. It is just like launching the application first and then opening the file. Now you may ask me why we don't have to do this when opening the file manually. All we do is double click the file and it just opens fine. Yes, all you do is double click the file, but in the background, Windows will first launch the application that is configured as the default application for that file type and then opens the actual file. All these steps happen so fast in the background that we are not able to see them. That is the reason why we need to have an action stage to create an Excel instance before we can open it. I'll name the stage as create instance. Then we have three tabs, inputs, outputs and conditions. For now, let's focus only on inputs and outputs. We'll talk about conditions later. As the name suggests, the inputs tab is to pass the input parameters for this action and the outputs tab returns the output of this action. The same way you might have used functions in any programming language. For this action create instance, it's asking only for one input which is enable events and this will tell Blue Prism whether to enable Excel events or not when the file is opened. So you can see the data type is a flag where you can mention true or false. When you give true, Blue Prism will allow events and when you give false, Blue Prism will not allow events. The default value is true, so if you leave it blank, enable events will be set to true. If you're not sure what Excel events are, don't worry about it now. Just leave it blank and go to the outputs tab. You'll see there is an output called handle. A handle is basically used to identify the Windows process of this application and it is always a number. For example, if you create two instances of the Excel application and in the later stage, if you want to open an Excel file, you need to tell Blue Prism which of the two instances you would like to use. So that is where you need the handle number. Again, this is not something you need to think too much about, but you simply have to store it in a data item and use it. So you need to create a data item of the type number. Let me show you a shortcut here. You really don't have to close this and go back to the canvas to create a data item. Instead, you can simply click this button and a data item will be created. You can see that it took the name of the output as the name of the data item, which is handle, and it also automatically chose the right data type, which is number. You can give any other name for the data item. All you need to do is simply type that name before you click this create button. Anyway, I'm going to click OK, and you can see that the data item handle is created. I'll just drag it to the right. The next step is to open the Excel file itself. So I'll place one more action stage, double click on it, name it as open workbook, select the business object MS Excel VBO and select the action as open workbook.
Now you need to provide two inputs, handle and file name. Drag and drop the handle data item and for the file name you need to type the full path of the file with the file extension. I'll show you a shortcut here instead of typing the full path. Go to the folder where the file is placed, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then right click on that file. You should see an option called copy as path. Just click that, then go back to the process studio, right click and paste it here. The complete file path along with the extension wrapped in double quotes is pasted. This is the best part of using copy as path. You don't even have to <laughs> enter the double quotes. Now go to the output and you need to provide a data item to store the workbook name which is basically just a file name without the path. As we did before, we will simply click this button and the data item gets created automatically. I'll click OK and you can see the data item workbook name. I'll drag it to the right. Next we need an action stage to take the data from the Excel file and copy it to the collection named students. So I'll place an action stage here, double click on it, name it as get to collection, select the business object as MS Excel VBO and select the action get worksheet as collection. I've got three inputs to fill in. The, I'll first drag and drop the handle and then the workbook name and for the worksheet name I need to type the name of the sheet manually. So if I open this Excel file you can see that the name of the sheet is sheet1 with s in uppercase. I'll type exactly the same within the double quotes. Then I go to the output and I need to specify the name of the collection where this data is going to be stored. I'm not going to create a new collection, instead I'll use the same students collection and then I'll click OK. Then I'll start linking these stages. Now before I start the process, I would like to clear the data from the students collection. So I'll double click students, then remove all the records from the initial values. Then click OK. Refresh and start. Okay, the process is completed. Now if I open the students collection and go to the initial values tab, there is nothing because we didn't give any initial values. All the values are picked from the Excel sheet. So if we go to the current values, you can see all the file records and their relevant grades. Now you might be wondering how this happened because you never saw the Excel file showing up. Well, Blue Prism doesn't require the Excel file to show up in order to work but the Excel file is still running in the background. If you launch Task Manager and go to the Processes tab, you can see Excel is still running. But if you want to see the Excel file while Brew Prism is working, you need to add one more stage to show the file. So I'll delete this link between Open Workbook and Get to Collection and move these stages to the left a little bit. Then place an action stage, double click. I'll name it as show workbook. Then select MS Excel VBO and select the action show. Here the only input you need to give is the handle. And there are no outputs. I'll click OK and join the links. Then click refresh and start. Now we can see that the Excel file showed up. Okay, so the process is completed.